Greetings watchers of the Marvel Multiverse. This is the Marvelous Wave and I hope you guys are having a great day. I just have something real quick before we delve into the video. Normally on the Marvelous Wave channel we've been focusing exclusively on the MCU with only a few exceptions. Delving into comics has sort of been a sideline thing for the time being, but if you guys enjoyed these comic explained videos as we talk about various things that happen in the Marvel comics and not just in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it would help me out if you could leave a like button and share the video, simply because the MCU videos seem to do much better, and I was wondering if you like this form of content from me. On another note, I was recently on a podcast with a group of friends of mine called The Nerd Circuit, where I sort of talked about my YouTube journey and how I got started, so if you're interested in that, the link will be below. With introductions out of the way, let's talk about the God Killer Mark II. The Invincible Armored Iron Man was the first superhero introduced in the MCU, with his first solo outing kickstarting the phenomenon known as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Throughout the past 10 years, we have been gifted the opportunity to see some truly iconic Iron Man suits in live action, with the Mark VII suit welcoming the Chitauri invasion of Earth, the Hulkbuster taking on the Incredible Hulk in the streets of South Africa, and the Mark 50 nanotech suits taking on the Mad Titan Thanos, just to name a few of the more iconic suits of armor. Comic fans, however, will be aware of a myriad of other iconic suits not seen in the MCU, and likely will not be seen or worn by Tony Stark unless it's somewhere in the multiverse. Some of Tony's most iconic suits include the famed Bleeding Edge armor, which the Mark 50 may have taken inspiration from, the Endosim armor from the Superior Iron Man storyline, and the various Vibranium and Uru suits that Tony Stark constructed, which fans have been pining to see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. These suits of armor are each incredibly powerful for their own reasons, and by their own specific designs, but while many of these suits are iconic and powerful in their own right, which suit worn by Tony Stark in his vast tenure as a Marvel comic hero and staple of the genre is the strongest. Which suit worn by Tony Stark is definitively, objectively, the strongest suit of Iron Man armor to date? While the title of strongest Iron Man suit may be a point of contention for some fans, seeing as each suit is designed for a specific purpose and provides different functions, we delved into Tony's vast comic history and selected what we believe to be the strongest Iron Man suit from the comics based on an objective scale. If you disagree with this analysis, feel free to let us know what you believe is the most powerful suit of armor and why in the comments down below, and we may even cover that armor in the future. All we ask is that you please remain civil in your discussions, as we're all here to have fun exploring some of Iron Man's most powerful suits of incredible armor, as we're all enthusiastic fans of the hero. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. The suit of armor that we believe is objectively the most powerful suit is none other than the God Killer Mark II, which was a titanic suit that was powered by no less than eight nuclear reactors with the express purpose of battling the Dark Celestials. While Tony Stark has created some incredible suits across his career, each designed to take on a new threat and battle a new enemy, the God Killer Mark II is likely the most complex, strongest, and most durable suit to have ever entered his collection. It is estimated that the God Killer armor cost $4 billion to develop and is interfaced through the Extremis armor. While Tony has been able to harness interplanetary travel through space in the past, this suit is one of the most advanced in the field of space transportation, able to travel from Earth to Mars in a matter of minutes. But where this armor really shines is in its physical combat capabilities. Tony used this suit to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Dark Celestials, as it was designed for, able to combat the Celestials in hand-to-hand -hand altercations, and even lift one of them off the ground for a period of time. The power of the Celestials should not be overlooked, as these colossal entities are some of the oldest beings in the universe, and are often cited as some of the most powerful beings across the history of all of existence. Yet, Tony Stark was able to develop a suit that was able to fight them off for several minutes. The repulsor capabilities of the God Killer are far beyond that of any of his previous suits of armor, and the suit itself is so massive that Tony hid it away in Mars's orbit as a contingency plan that he has very seldom ever had to deploy. In a battle with the being known as Callus the Void, one of the aforementioned Dark Celestials, Tony was able to hold his own for several minutes before the suit lost its left arm 
arm at Callus's hand. It is worth noting that Callus was the entity responsible for subduing and decapitating the celestial known as Ison the Searcher in hand-to-hand -hand combat nonetheless. In the MCU, we famously got a glimpse of Ison the Searcher as he used the might of the Power Stone to decimate an entire planet. Callus fought the celestial in single combat, overpowered him, and claimed his head as a prize. Yet Tony and his godkiller armor were able to fend off Callus's attack for a considerable amount of time. Not only did Callus go head to head with Ison and defeat him, he also survived being teleported into the sun by Captain America via the use of Alpha Flight's Omega level warp grenades. Yet Tony Stark and the godkiller armor fought on. After losing his armor's arm in the battle, Tony then grabbed the Dark Celestial and flew him into orbit with the intention of detonating the self-destruct function in the suit and killing Callus. He did this with the hope that the death of the Dark Celestial would cause the rest of the encroaching Celestials to retreat. The Godkiller Mark II would later take on the full might of a swarm of dead Celestials that had been revived by the Horde to send the armor systems into critical and force Tony to eject himself into space. He would soon after detonate the suit away, which had stood to the full force of a dozen Celestials, truly cementing the suit as one of if not the most powerful suit of armor that Tony Stark had ever created. While Tony has created some incredible suits across his career, there are a few feats of strength and durability that can be compared to that of the God Killer. But given the magnitude of his collection and the vast array of different suits that he's created, we'd like to hear your thoughts. What do you believe is Tony's most powerful suit of armor? And do you believe your choice is more powerful than the God Killer Mark II? As always, my friends, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And beyond this, what is your favorite Iron Man suit of armor? If you enjoyed these comic-centric videos, be sure to hit the like button and request more in the comments down below. As always, my friends, hit that subscribe button to assemble and join our team, and have a great day.